Welcome my storytime friends. This is Judy S here and I wanted to say happy Valentine's Day to everyone. I wanted to share a couple of Valentine's stories with you and show you um, what I've done with the Valentine craft that I supplies I have put out for everybody at their favorite library location. So you can do your own Valentine card at home, either with me or after our story time. And I just wanted to say it's so important to have adults who are who uh, know about kindness in our lives. And I think it's a great way to tell them how much you appreciate them by giving them a nice Valentine card. So to start off, I would like to read to you about a teacher who knows about kindness. And it's called Kindness is Cooler, Mrs. Ruler. Do you know a teacher or an adult who knows about kindness or has shown you how to, how to, how to show kindness? That would be great. And the author of this book is Marjorie Kyler. So let's see what happens. I like Valentine's Day. It can be a lot of fun, right? It's fun to give cards. It's fun to get cards and to show a lot of kindness. Okay, let's see what happens in this one. This is about a class at school, as we can see. All right. It was cold. It was rainy. And Mrs. Ruler's class hadn't been outside all week. The students were getting jumpy and grumpy. Anaya and Tawana whispered during story time. Yep. And we've had lots of wet weather, a lot of snowy weather, right? David pulled Rakalita's ponytail, and Rakalita stole his hat. Then David grabbed Connor's hat and threw it into the hall. That's enough. Too rough, shouted Mrs. Ruler. Mm. Now tell me, why do you think I've kept you in from recess? We were acting up, mum mumbled Connor. That's right. You were being mean to one another, and you acted as if it's cool to be mean. But it's not. What is a cooler way to act? Rakalita spoke up. Kindness is cooler, Mrs. Ruler, she said. Bravo, a slice of nice makes a mile of smile. You five need to practice being kind. During the next few days, I want you to perform five acts of kindness for your families. And then in show and tell, you can share what you did with the rest of the class. Ooh, that sounds like fun. But David scowled. What if I don't feel like being kind, he asked. Mrs. Ruler smiled. Good deeds fill needs. Count on me. You'll see, she said. The next day, Anaya and Tawana couldn't wait for show and tell. When it was their turn, they ran to the front of the class. We did 10 acts of kindness last night, said Tawana. Before dinner, I made special placemats. I set the table, said Anaya. I drew hearts on the napkins to show mom we love her, said Tawana. I grated the cheese for the macaroni, said Anaya. I helped make the salad, said Tawana. And after dinner, we carried the dishes to the sink, said Anaya. And I loaded the dishwasher, said Tawana. While I took out the garbage, added Anaya. Then I sponged off the table, said Tawana. And I straightened up the chairs, finished Anaya. Mom told us how much she liked her homework. It put her in such a good mood that we want to do more nice things for her. Bravo, said Mrs. Ruler. 
10 acts of kindness will lead to more. Give me the chalk and I'll keep score. Then she wrote the twins' deeds on the blackboard. When she was finished, she looked at David. What about you, she asked. Did you practice too? No, said David. I just couldn't get into it. Oh my, please try. Kindness is cooler, said Mrs. Ruler. After school, Rakalita invited Connor over for a play date. She had a new dog and a big family, so there were lots of ways Rakalita and Connor could practice being kind. In show and tell the next day, they shared kindness with the class. We took Puddles for a walk, said Rakalita, and we threw him a ball. I filled his water dish, said Connor, and I gave him some puppy chow, said Rakalita. Puppy chow, wow, said Mrs. Ruler. Then we built a block tower with my little brother, said Rakalita, and gave Abuelo and Abuelita their canes before they took a walk. We also helped Rakalita's dad carrying groceries from the car, said Connor. And I gave my baby sister her bottle, said Rakalita. I count eight, and eight is great, said Mrs. Ruler. That's not all, said Connor. When I got home, I took in the mail, and I also carried the clean laundry upstairs. Bravo, said Mrs. Ruler. Altogether, you did ten. That's a lot of kind acts. That's nice. And how much do the twins' ten acts and your ten acts make? Twenty, shouted the class. That's right, said Mrs. Ruler. Twenty is plenty. But how about you, David? What did you do? Too few for you, said David. The class laughed. I told my brother I liked his haircut, and I let him use my comb. That's all I could think of. Well, that's a good start. Keep doing your part, said Mrs. Ruler. Lauren raised her hand. I'd like to try some acts of kindness when I get home today, too, she said. Okay, hooray, said Mrs. Ruler. Let's turn this into a class project. For the rest of the week, I'd like you to bring in some acts of kindness you've done at home. I'll write your acts on paper hearts and put them on the bulletin board. And I'll also add the ones from the blackboard. Wow, so many kind acts they're doing. It adds up to a lot. More acts. Put away clothes. Vacuumed living room rug, shelved books. These are more acts of kindness. Let my big brother use my computer. Tell dad I liked his shirt and got sister a band-aid when she skinned her knee. That's very nice. And more kindness. Cleaned my room, fed goldfish, emptied waste baskets, watered houseplants, put groceries away, drew pictures with my little sister, and told my sister that she has nice teeth. <laughs> That's nice. The class really came through. We have so many. We'll need another wall, Mrs. Ruler exclaimed. Let's count. One, two, three. The kids counted till they reached 35. Bravo, said their teacher. Now try skip counting by fives. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, shouted the class. That's right, you're bright, said Mrs. Ruler. We should keep going with this project. Now let's try some acts of kindness at school. I'll add those to the wall, too. Don't forget. A slice of nice makes a mile of smile. As Mrs. Ruler kept cutting out more hearts, Connor and Pablo tried some school kindness too. They invited David to sit with them at lunch. And when they finished their sandwiches, David took one of Connor's cookies. 
Hey, quit it, said Connor. He grabbed David's lunch bag and threw it over his head. Stop, cried Pablo. Don't you remember what Mrs. Ruler said? Good deeds, Phil needs. David, don't grab. And Connor, you still have four cookies. Why don't you share them with David and me? Oops, said Connor. You're right. For a moment, I forgot about being kind. And Connor gave some cookies to his friends. I agree. Here are three. Yum, said David. I'm going to ask my babysitter to help me make cookies when I get home. And then you can bring them to school, said Pablo, and share them with the whole class, added Connor. And Mrs. Ruler will congratulate me for being extra kind, said David. But I still won't done a, have done as many acts of kindness as everyone else. So think of other things to catch up, said Pablo. Hmm, I wonder how he'll catch up being kind. Oh, wow, look what's going on here. David didn't have to think for long. That afternoon when Caitlin was cleaning the gerbil's cage, the gerbils got loose. One even jumped to the window ledge. Mrs. Ruler hopped on a chair. Eek! Squeak! She cried. Everyone ran for cover. Everyone but David. He chased the gerbils. He scooped them up one by one and then he set them back where they belonged. Hooray for David! yelled the class. Your act of kindness was the best, cried Mrs. Ruler. Now go on home and do the rest. She jumped off the chair and added the acts of kindness from that week to the wall. Wow, that's special. Mrs. Ruler and the class counted up all the hearts. By now the class had done 70 acts of kindness. That's great, but wait, said Mrs. Ruler. There's more in store. Let's keep going and spread some kindness beyond school. There are lots of kind acts you can do in the community. But we're just little kids, said David. How can we do stuff outside our house and our school? What do you think? How can they? I'll ask your parents to work with you on community kindness. And I'll help too, said Mrs. Ruler. All it takes is one simple act, one act of kindness that will make the world a better place. If you act from your heart and do your part, we'll end up with 100 acts of kindness all together. Now the class was really excited and David was more excited than anyone. A few weeks later, the kids shared their acts of community kindness. Mrs. Ruler, added more hearts to the wall. Again, the class counted. One, two, three, until they got to 99. Oh no, uh-oh, said Mrs. Ruler. We still need one more. Then she paused and thought for a moment. I know, let's have a class party. We'll decorate and celebrate 100 acts of kindness, shouted the class. Okay, hooray. Wow, isn't that great what that class did? And you can do all kinds of acts of kindness at home, at school, and in your community as well. Let's see, so we heard lots of examples of family kindness and school kindness. You wanna hear some ideas they had of community kindness? I'll read just a few. Let's see. You can collect teddy bears for a teddy bear drive. You could collect winter coats for a coat drive. You could have a bake sale to raise money for an animal shelter. You could send money to reading is fundamental. And you could donate change to Habitat for Humanity. Wow, there are just so many. Those are just a few. All kinds of things you can do in your community. Okay, well, that's really great. And that's a great story. 
and I hope you can think of some other great kind ways to show the adults and also people, also children your age how much you appreciate kindness. Okay, I want to read you one other quick story and then I will show you my Valentine card and just give you some ideas of what you can do with the Valentine card that we put out in the library for you to do at home. Now this is Fluffy's Valentine's Day and I'm just going to read you uh, one or two of the chapters from Fluffy's Valentine's Day. Fluffy is the class guinea pig and he has some funny ideas on Valentine's Day. Now, who likes Valentine's Day? That's the name of this chapter. Tomorrow is Valentine's Day, said Miss Day, and today we will make Valentine boxes. Decorate your box to show what you love. They love me, thought Fluffy. See, it's February. And by the way, I just wanted to say one thing I almost forgot. I read the book, Kindness, and cool, Kindness is Cooler, Mrs. Ruler, with permission of Simon and & Schuster. And I am reading Fluffy's Valentine's Day with permission of Scholastic Publishing Companies. Okay, thank you. All right, let's see. Now it's February in this story because it's Valentine's Day in this class. Just like this month, it will be for us too. The kids cut pictures out of magazines and pasted things on their boxes. They sprinkled on glitter, but nobody stopped by to see Fluffy the guinea pig all morning. Fluffy thought to himself, I don't think I like Valentine's Day. Everyone worked hard until lunchtime. No one checked to see if Fluffy's food bowl was empty. It wasn't, but it could be, thought Fluffy, and he burrowed under his straw. I don't like Valentine's Day, says Fluffy. That afternoon, the kids shared their Valentine boxes. Fluffy peeked at them from under the straw. I love pink, said Emma. I pasted pink ribbons on my box. Eh, so what, thought Fluffy. I drew a heart on mine, Maxwell said. <gasps> Yawn, thought Fluffy. I pasted a picture of Jan de Blue on my box, said Jasmine. She's the world's fastest woman. Why not a picture of me, thought Fluffy. I'm the world's fastest guinea pig. I love sharks, said Wade. That's what I drew on my box. So get a shark for a class pet, thought Fluffy. I quit. Valentine's Day, bah, who needs it? Then Miss Day said, shall we show Fluffy his Valentine box? Show me what, Fluffy thought. Surprise, Fluffy, everyone shouted. Jasmine and Wade held up a red box. Black letters spelled out, we love you, Fluffy. You do, thought Fluffy. Well, who can blame you? I am one lovable pig. Wade opened Fluffy's Valentine box and took out a bright red apple. Ms. Day cut it in half and put it in Fluffy's cage. Who likes Valentine's Day, thought Fluffy? I do. Okay, and I have one more chapter I want to show you from this story, and it's called Fluffy Takes a Bath. Jasmine and Emma took Fluffy for a walk in the hallway. Their friend Lena came along, and when she saw Fluffy, Lena said, Aw, oh, what's her name? His name, thought Fluffy. I'm a boy pig. But Jasmine only said, Fluffy. She's so cute, said Lena, but she smells funny. She does, Fluffy thought. I mean, I do? Fluffy gave himself a little sniff. He had a fine guinea pig smell. What was that silly girl talking about? When they got back to the classroom, Jasmine said, Miss Day, Fluffy needs a bath. No way, thought Fluffy. I do not need a bath. I'll make him smell good for Valentine's Day, said Emma. I smell good now, thought Fluffy. I smell just right. That's a fine idea, said Miss Day. Hey, thought Fluffy, whose side are you on? Hmm. Emma put some warm water in a plastic tub, and Jasmine started to lower Fluffy into the water. 
Stop, thought Fluffy. He wiggled and kicked. He squealed and squealed. Help, save me, police. Somebody, anybody help. Fluffy, said Emma, stop acting like a baby. Who, me, thought Fluffy? And Jasmine put him in the tub. The warm bath water made Fluffy feel warm all over. Okay, thought Fluffy, I can handle this. Emma squirted guinea pig shampoo into her hand. She rubbed it onto Fluffy's back. The shampoo turned Fluffy all white and foamy. Look out, thought Fluffy. I'm a big, bad polar bear. Jasmine poured warm water over Fluffy to rinse off the soap. Now I'm a seal, thought Fluffy. I'm swimming under a waterfall. Jasmine poured until the bubbles were gone. Emma picked Fluffy up. Bath time's over, she said. That's what you think, thought Fluffy. He kicked and splashed. He squealed and squealed. You didn't wash my face. What about my paws? Hey, we're not finished here. What a fusser, said Jasmine. She dried Fluffy with a soft towel. Then she took him over to a box. Inside was a hot water bottle wrapped, wrapped in a towel. Jasmine put Fluffy into the box. Stay here until you're dry, she said. Fluffy stretched out on the towel. He gave himself a little sniff. He smelled like shampoo, but under the shampoo, he still had his fine guinea pig smell. Maybe I'll need another bath tomorrow, thought Fluffy. Okay, and this is our last chapter about Fluffy's Valentine's fun, and it's called A Kiss for Fluffy. Miss Day's class invited Mr. Lee's class to a Valentine's Day party. Mr. Lee's class brought cupcakes, candy hearts, and a guinea pig named Kiss. Emma put Fluffy into his play yard. Jamal from Mr. Lee's class put in Kiss. Maybe they'll fall in love, said Emma. Yuck, said Jamal. Who are you, asked Fluffy. I'm Kiss, said Kiss. Who are you? I'm, uh, they call me King, said Fluffy. Oh, right, said Kiss. I bet your name is really Binky or Cutie or Fluffy. How did she know, thought Fluffy. I'm a crested guinea pig, Kiss told Fluffy. Crested guinea pigs are the best because of that little Fluffy part on her head. What are you doing in my yard, Fluffy asked Kiss. Anything I want, said Kiss, who was bigger and fatter than Fluffy. Uh, okay, said Fluffy. I need a snack, said Kiss. What have you got to eat? Half of Fluffy's Valentine apple was in the play yard. Fluffy hoped Kiss wouldn't see it, but she did. Kiss ran over to the apple and started chomping on it. Fluffy ran over too. Grrr, growled Kiss. Get away. It's my apple, said Fluffy. Not anymore, said Kiss. Fluffy watched Kiss eat his apple. His bright red valentine apple. It made him so mad. What do you do for fun around here? Kiss asked Fluffy. I have some toys, Fluffy told her. All I see is a bunch of junk, said Kiss. Junk, said Fluffy. Okay, Kiss, he thought. You asked for it. See how he's going to trick her. You can climb in the cardboard box, Fluffy told Kiss, or in the coconut shell, but don't go in the tube. Why not, asked Kiss. You wouldn't like it, said Fluffy. I want to go in the tube, said Kiss. Don't, said Fluffy. I'm warning you. But Kiss scurried over to the tube. Whatever you do, Fluffy called after her, don't run into the tube. Kiss started running. She ran faster and faster. Ooh, what do you think will happen? She ran right into the tube. Fluffy went around to the other side of the tube. He poked his head in. I, uh, I think I'm stuck, said Kiss. Fluffy shook his head. I tried to warn you, he said. Do you think he had an idea that would happen? I think he did. The Valentine's Day party ended. Jamal and Emma came for the guinea pigs. Oh no, Emma said, Kiss is stuck in the tube. Jamal pulled on Kiss and she popped out. 
Look at my crest, Kiss said. Yeah, said Fluffy. It's all messed up. See, her hair was all messed up. Emma picked up Fluffy. Jamal picked up Kiss. Do you think they fell in love, asked Emma. I don't think so, said Jamal. I don't think so either, thought Fluffy. <laughs> but I think he certainly had a lot of fun on his Valentine's Day. Okay, well, I just want to show you. I have magic rainbow paper at home, although it's in a shape of a fish. The one I gave to everybody is in the shape of a nice Valentine's card. But I'm going to show you how I'm going to decorate my magic paper. Because I want to show someone I know how much I appreciate their kindness. So first, I am going to, I, and I put a nice wooden stick in each of the bags. And you can use that to draw on your rainbow paper. So first I draw a heart. And then I'm going to write in my heart, thank you. And my special person who showed me kindness is my department head here at the library, our head librarian, Michelle, who is such a great librarian and makes the children's room such a great place to work. And as we start to open more and more, it will be such a great place for everyone to come in to play and get their books and to read and to learn. So we are looking forward to that more and more. So my card is going to say, thank you, Michelle. You are so kind, right? Because we learned that kindness is very good. And when you start coming into the children's room more and more, you will also see how kind and wonderful Michelle and everyone who works at the library can be to everyone in the community is we like to show kindness to each other and we like to show kindness to everyone who uses the library. All right, I hope you have a great Valentine's Day and I can't wait to see you online and, and more and more soon in person. Okay, take care.